welcome wherever you are whoever you might be watching um this stream from the comfort of your own homes my name's jonathan and um i'm joined by students in the final year the graduating year of the um wimbledon ba sculpture course um i'm not a full-time member of staff but um i've been invited in now and then over the past few years to run workshops most recently i was invited in um at the end of february to um host a workshop with this year group um to talk about my own curatorial practice my own writing practice um and also to carry out some studio visits and ultimately to encourage them to think about um how they might go about curating their own exhibition um which was to take place on the 12th of march uh, march at art hub studios in south london uh, in deptford and um it seemed very clear to me pretty soon after starting that um as a year group um they were very clear and very autonomous and um very kind of discerning about you know their own practices and their own attitudes towards exhibition making um and so in the run up to this exhibition that opened on the 12th of march um there was this wonderful discovery by some of the students um which become became the basis for the exhibition which was the discovery of a journal um which was published um by the sculpture department in um the early 1970s started in 64 but went through to the early 70s um a journal that was overseen by the artist Francisca Temerson uh, and then other guest editors and contributors um and it seemed like because this year group were um the penultimate um sculpture uh, year group in the Wimbledon sculpture department in other words the department was closing it seemed like a really interesting time to revisit this really visionary publication and so this became the basis um for an exhibition that took place um that really was very much a collaborative process um and so in the space itself there was this um uh the use of this concept to this kind of ethos of of dramaturgy and um the students produced work in response to um the journal titled its um and worked with a limited palette of materials to produce a theatrical um display setting for the work and i have to say i just was very impressed by um what i saw it was an absolute pleasure um interestingly on the 12th of march um the show opened 4 days before um we were told as a as a public that perhaps we should avoid unnecessary social con- contact and then of course on the 23rd of march boris johnson um instructed people to stay at home and certain businesses to close um so it meant um really that this was at the beginning of um the pandemic and the evening before the opening of this show i, I went over to south um to um bermondsey park gallery and they just made the decision to postpone their show so it seemed like a really peculiar moment to be opening a group show um you know the show before the degree show which ultimately didn't happen so um unexpectedly this exhibition that we did um became the last physical show um so i'm just kind of interested to to begin here um just by thinking about um what this experience of taking down the show was like and then also um you know when did college close and and um i should just say before you answer that um we're on a zoom trial version here so we've got time constraints um so there will be a countdown at some point um to indicate that we have 10 minutes left and once the time is out the time is out we're also <laughs> this is obviously not the full extent of the sculpture department um but i think this very much speaks to this kind of dispersed fragmented thing that's taking place amongst graduating art students you know who might be having these social events um so anyway so to come back to my question last physical show what was the takedown like and um when did workshops close at the college 
I don't remember much of the takedown because it all seemed like a bit of a blur because it really did feel like the last kind of point that we're all together. Um, but I mean, I remember returning all of the blocks we used for the plinths to Travis Perkins to get our money back. Um, and then I can't remember when the studios closed because it felt like that week that we finished the show that everything kind of petered out. So like all of the like structures for the show were kind of just left in the studio. Um, and it was a bit of a, a strange kind of like hit when we left. But so I can't recall when like workshops and everything were shut, but no, it was a strange sort of like unassembling everything that was at the show. Mm. Mm. Were there many visitors to the exhibition? Or was there a sense of a cautiousness at that point? It was definitely, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. People like already by that point, people didn't want to go out and wanted to socially distance. Mm. So yeah, it was a strange environment, strange atmosphere to have an exhibition in for sure. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it was like quite flat because I think the show itself was quite experimental from us as a group rather than us all bringing one piece of work that we'd been making in our own individual practices. We'd kind of done this slightly complex idea and worked along with an artist's brief together and had, like you say, with these constraints for making. So there was this big, huge build-up and everyone had to put a lot of time and energy into it and then it was just this flatness once it opened because mm. there wasn't the footfall and then taking it down was a little bit like, there was that inkling like, are we going to have a show already? People, degree shows were already being cancelled and things were starting to shut down. And it was kind of this slight sadness, I think, that mm. this show we put a lot into then just kind of like dwindled off and that then just mm. became the last contact we had with each other as well because because my perception of it was that um the um you know if you think about the degree show the degree show is this kind of moment to sell the individual artist and that this group this this show that you put together was a collective effort and in a way it, i remember talking about this idea of it being a kind of an antidote almost to this subsequent degree show which is about you know platforming individual artists um I know you said you, you can't quite remember when the workshops shut down, but there was already a sense then as you were taking down that show that mm. that maybe the well, degree show was... would be compromised in some way. Yeah, yeah. Because it was the Easter Easter holidays, yeah, end of term. End of term. Um, so like lots of people weren't planning necessary to come back or had made plans to start making their degree show work in Easter. And that just never happened. Mm. It was like suddenly you're not going back to the studios. You don't have anything. You don't have any of the things that you left there. Mm. And you're not going to the workshops. So yeah, yeah it was pretty, like just, just then. Just before like this group show, I remember we had like a meeting and were given like a bit of a briefing on how to do our proposals for our degree show and stuff. And there was just kind of when we were doing this group show, a kind of weird sort of, I don't know, kind of understanding that maybe those proposals won't be fulfilled or like done in the way that we initially mm. imagined. And like Sarah especially always said that we seem to want to do like a lot of external shows. We had one at Copeland the month before and everything. And I mean, it's, it's just quite funny because then we never really had the degree, well, whether we have a physical show, yeah. what happens, but mm. we don't mm. have the normal degree show, but we kind of packed in these other external ones, which at the time seemed a bit mad, but I think now everyone's, I mean, quite glad that we had that opportunity to do those because mm. mm. we don't know what's the degree show as so much now. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, because it's, yeah. sorry. It seemed quite extraordinary, didn't it? Because you, you did the show at Copeland and then within a month you were doing another show. <laughs> um in Deptford at the Art Hub Studios. Um um so um I guess I'm I'm kind of curious to know really um how lockdown has affected your practices and approaches to the final show because um you know if you if you kind of take a survey of how art schools have dealt with this, you know, certainly at like postgraduate level, 
the Royal College of Art just cancelled it. And there was a great uproar about that. And Slade promised to postpone it to September. Um, the Royal Academy have talked about, because they have the means to do so, allowing students to actually just to redo the year. Um, what was offered to you as an alternative um, to realising the show? And how did that affect your approaches to, you know, what you were working on? I think... To start with, nothing was clear. So I'd say for about six weeks, it was that there still could potentially be a show where it could just be a few weeks later. No one, no one had an answer. Mm -hmm. And then it slowly became more clear that the physical show wasn't going to be happening in the current time. And it was going to be more digital, like a digital showcase. But still we've got promised to us that there's going to be a physical show, maybe January time. But that we were to kind of focus our efforts on just getting the submission for the final year done and that we'd kind of mainly be marked on a proposal for a show, mm. which was quite a, a really odd approach because you could, on one hand you could be quite, you could go further and plan more than you know would be actually possible. But then on the other side, it felt bizarre putting loads of energy into just a proposal that you were going to just upload to Moodle that wasn't going to physically happen. Mm. Um, so I know it made a lot of us probably work very differently because making, I know myself, I stayed, I stayed in London in like my one bed flat with my partner and my dog and it's not got the space to be able to make loads of big work. So I have to fully rethink and I think, did you guys have to do the same? Yeah, yeah, and I think a lot of our time was also spent on our portfolios and kind of looking back at existing work, which I think actually worked out quite well. There was quite a lot of sort of reflection and refinement of existing work and kind of those themes that you keep working with. I felt like we were really thrashing through those like in tutorials or as a group or just being on your own and being able to think about everything, I don't think there would have been that reflection, like, and to an extent sort of understanding of our own work, had we been like, sort of getting a degree show out there and painting the walls and setting it up. So I think that kind of did have its own positives. Um, but this like online degree show, I know for a lot of us, is sort of an extension of the portfolio because mm. I mean with sculpture it's very difficult to kind of show like a project through however many slides you get on one page of the site and stuff so I think yeah if I know for me it's sort of become an extension of the portfolio really rather than like a show or a project within itself mm. um, but I don't I don't know about everyone but yeah, I mean, maybe predictably, I did more like digital things. So I made films and stuff, <laughs> um, which was nice. I, I enjoyed it. And it's, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, yeah, obviously, we have to kind of, you had to adapt to whatever you had around you. And I think, especially for a lot of us in sculpture, um, we used to, you know, having like, or just using things like the metal workshop or the wood workshop a lot, which you just can't do at home unless you have tools. Um, so yeah, I, I think, yeah, for me at least, and I'm sure for a lot of other people, like I guess a move towards like a digital practice or um, yeah, I did, I did find, I wouldn't say the whole time during lockdown that it was productive for me, mm -hmm. but um but there, there was so much time. So eventually I did manage to work in new ways and like sort of come up with processes that I know if I was, you know, working towards a physical degree show, I would not have even been thinking about mm. or, um, or working on at that time. So mm. there's definitely good parts to it. We, we, and, um, sorry. I mean, um, I, I just, I can't think, I mean, I'm older than you, um, but I can't think of a time in my life where there has been genuine economic slowing, genuine, meaningful, deep slowing down. I mean, 
you know, despite obviously all of the kind of horror and trauma that's come with it. Um, but it's been interesting because um, there's also been this kind of emphasis on the need to be productive, to stay busy, to to give the appearance that you're unfazed by it. Um, but I mean, we're we're sort of talking here around like this um, slowing as a ref uh, all the benefits of slowing down, you know, ref being reflective, being reflective, but also just stopping production because so much of contemporary art is based on the production of newness all the time, new things all the time, you know. And at this stage in your careers as, you know, final undergraduate students, you know, you're all, you all would be busy, you know, in the studios producing and producing and producing. So it's a really interesting um, and also, you know, uncertain context to be working in. Um, I guess this kind of leads... To another question um you know you are a kind of historic generation of <laughs> fine art graduates um you know and i think probably in 30 years time be interesting to look back and, re and reflect again on this this moment um i'm sort of interested to know how you're feeling about your futures as artists you know because <laughs> you're sort of geared up towards the final degree show and, you know, and sort of hitting the ground running and seeking opportunities and, um, and all that kind of stuff and making big decisions about your futures. You know, do you stay in London, which is, you know, do you go home? Do you go to Berlin or do you, I don't know. So I'm kind of curious to know how you're feeling about your, your future as artists. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably something that we've all been just trying to think about a little bit it's the question that would maybe push us over the edge I, <laughs> um, I mean I've been kind of for sure trying not to think about the future of what's next until this kind of like online degree show and everything's done it's felt like a little bit of like a digital rigmarole if that kind of makes sense mm -hmm. of like constant like output we've needed to do so that stuff was accessible through a computer for everyone to see mm -hmm. compared to so I guess that's been what the main focus has been on and Can you, it's also felt accessible like, well, accessible do you mean do you mean accessible in terms of like the standards that would be expected um of like web design for people to be able to understand the work uh, you know across different abilities do you I mean think, I think a mixture of that and also just being able to trans translate the works that normally we'd expect people to see mm. physically to then be through a screen. So I know like how you were saying, Jesse, like productivity changed so much and mine was the same. I didn't do anything for a while and I felt so for myself and had to like completely relearn how to make. And then that whole work I've done throughout lockdown has been a reflection of like, the domestic setting I've been in. Mm. So I guess, it's now we're all starting to come out of those settings. It's making new work that reintegrated within the world we're coming back into. So I don't, I don't know where I'll go. I don't. None of us have planned to go into MAs yet, have we? Us that are on this call. No. And I, I mean, it's weird. I think like even across colleges and unis, there's kind of this like on Instagram and everything, there's this knowledge of like the 2020 graduate and kind of what you've maybe missed out on. And then there's actually, I think quite a cohesiveness between like colleges and people that maybe you wouldn't always interact with because of what's happened and mm. like the settings that we're all making work in. But equally, I think, I know for me, like, I wouldn't want the sole reason for, like, our year to be remembered is because of this. <laughs> so there's also that fight of, like, trying to not have, like, your work or, like, everything that you've done this year kind of boil down to this situation mm. right now, like, whether it's on the computer looking at your sculpture through, like, a two-dimensional space or anything. I think there's kind of a bit of to and fro between, like, being a part of something but also not having that define everything and define your work mm. I suppose also there's like that you know when you feel helpless in a situation 
and it and it has been a traumatic few months i mean not not just covid but also you know the murder of george floyd and the eruption of black lives matter the re-eruption of black lives matter um i guess like also one might feel that the only response is to either make work about those things respond to those things or to not make anything at all um and i yeah i that's just a kind of an observation but the rest of you how how are you feeling about the future I, I mean, the things that one would expect to be like doing now, uh, sort of, you know, going in, going into your early career, mm. uh, would be like, you know, going to private views, meeting people, like very sociable, um, and quite, you know, it's like a very particular experience going to private views, getting a drink, meeting people, all of these things, um, which now. It's just not happening. It's not go. It won't happen in the same way for a while, mm. um, and it actually, in a way, has made me realise that I'm not that sad about it. And actually, um, I'm quite looking forward to an adapting, not in like trying to do the same things. So we're not going to do like private views over Zoom, but maybe thinking of new ways to move forward and new spaces. Um, yeah, we've just got to, to the to countdown. <laughs> <laughs> countdown, we've got 10 minutes left. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Just, I guess the same thing. It's like, um, I think also because there has been time to really think, and I think this isn't just about it with students. I think this, it seems like it's also with like, uh, tutors and people like in institutions that maybe it's like now more than ever is it's like a great time to sort of make opportunities for yourself or like you know or especially with I think with the with the murder of George Floyd and what that kind of like really sparked is um like a questioning of how everything is like working at, or, or how it was working mm -hmm. and um I think it's actually really exciting because people are going to make different kinds of spaces and I think that the impact that, you know, that, that uh, the closure of like universities at the moment has had on people um, means that new spaces are going to be like coming up everywhere. Mm -hmm. People are going to find new ways to put on exhibitions or like make work accessible to the public. Um, not just digitally, but like, you know, events in the park um, and that kind of thing. I think it's really nice. I think things will become more open for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Hopefully. An equalising. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> I think like uh, things that are like very important are going to probably be integ integrated like from the from the start of mm, these mm, new things mm. which is better than trying to put them in halfway through why not build something like yeah. on those foundations already yeah i mean the the the, the i mean the, yes just to to respond to that i mean it seems to me that all of the things that the structures and the ways of doing things um, that are taken for granted and, and understood as being a natural course, you know, and contemporary art is just one of those heavily socially coded spaces full of conventions and unspoken rules that, you know, let's face it, if you go to art school, it's an initiation into that. But um, as you're saying, if I understand it right, you know, you, you're, you're the generation that has the opportunity to really rethink that from this sort of resetting if you like um and um it's sort of on a slightly different tangent um speaking of institutions reshaping and reforming you're the penultimate year to graduate from the sculpture course at Wimbledon um I, I don't know how to make this into a question um <laughs> what Will the sculpture course continue elsewhere or in a different form? And how do you, how do you, what's being lost, do you think? 
or what's being gained possibly by the closure of the course? This is the wild card question. Or maybe you don't care. <laughs> I mean, I think it's a loss, personally. Um, I think it's got a massive history, the sculpture course at Wimbledon. I don't know if anyone knows like exactly how long, but it's years and years and years. <laughs> Hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> and then many a year. Um, and I, I think you can feel that, and there's a really massive thing and whether it's within the tutors and the course itself, I know Sarah and James have been there a long time as well. And there's like a lot of questions of what is sculpture and what it can be. It's not, it feels different to me to other like fine art courses. And I think there's, it's a, it's a massive thing like spatially and where the sculpture course took place in these like huge, like an outbuilding barn studio that it's it's strange but yeah that's a big part of it and i think that is a loss um there's is it merging with camberwell sculpture right. is that the word they were using yeah um, yeah. yeah so yeah hmm. but i do yeah. think that because of you know all of these like people especially in like recent years we've we have been taught by the same people. So has been running this course for a long time. I think we all, like the majority of students who leave the course are very aware of the fact that the experience we've had is quite unique. Mm. And obviously some people are gonna want to go into teaching art and in, in some shape or form. And I can imagine that the the way that we were taught will be like carried on. So yes, yeah. you're like losing a history, um, but the the like values that we've all sort of learnt on sculpture, that it sounds very really deep, but um, <laughs> but will like continue on, I think. In some yeah, that's a, really, that's a really good point. I've not actually properly thought about it like that. We've probably, I guess, the past couple of years we've all been feeling quite negative about the closure because it's like been about the loss and because we know what we've experienced is so unique mm -hmm. but it's true and I guess that'll live on in in our art whether it's like an artist's career or whatever kind of outputs we have as individuals and a group what I think the main thing with our course was just this idea of like space like physical but also this like emotional like mental space to just be able to try things out and mm -hmm fail and discuss it it wasn't kind of it never really felt like too much of like a rat race to try and be like the it make like the new it work or the new cool thing which mm. i see as really off putting mm. because it, it makes things less genuine so um definitely i think that'll stick with us all and mm -hmm. yeah. the sense of community i mean such a, a buzzword but um just yeah, in Wimbledon, you know, we had the studios, we had the courtyard, and then we had all the workshops nearby. So like wood and metal and the foundry and mm -hmm. the relationship with technicians, because we were such a small course and because we had such lovely space mm -hmm. and such lovely people. Um, it really is something that, I mean, I know my friends from other places um, <laughs> haven't experienced and and it's kind of i mean it's what i guess it's what you always imagined art school would be like mm, mm. but it isn't anymore mm. it's yeah. like mm. it just isn't i <laughs> um, i came in on um the first day for for these workshops and there was a dirty mug in the middle of the studio and on the <laughs> on and at the end of the second day it was in exactly the same place that, <laughs> there's <laughs> there's nowhere else i've been <laughs> In the last ten years, <laughs> where that would happen. <laughs> when we when we came back after like when things eased and we were allowed to collect our stuff, there was a lot of dirty mugs everywhere. <laughs> like, well, not a piece of wear. Um, we we home. we've got less than a minute, and I don't we don't know when this is going to end. But just to respond to uh, just to pick up on this buzzword that you used, um, the um, community. Um, 
it must be strange to be so dispersed because, um, you know, you rely on your community that you form in art school for your context to, you know, to give meaning to your work and also to collaborate and work on other projects. And what's that been like to be so dispersed? How do you address it? It was very hard initially. I think people like Sarah and James, the tutor, kind of pulled that together mm. a little bit. You did feel like you had places like sounding boards to bounce your work off because it's super isolating, I think, just making work at home. Mm. Yeah. But I think over time, for me at least, it's kind of like levelled out again. Like you, the shock's like over and then you kind of continue those like relationships and those discussions in a similar way I think but maybe that's also to do with having a really small group is it's kind of easier to keep those connections when there's so few of you in the first place yeah. I guess yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I'm looking forward to us all doing a show together though <laughs> when we are going to at some point <laughs> I am looking forward to it so much is there yeah. is there talk of that will be. is there a talk is there talk of a show of the degree show yeah. um, Redux? Yeah, yeah, in 